Okay, good evening, everybody. Um, always a pleasure to teach this class. I'll tell you why it's a pleasure. It, uh, even I, actually, just I'll start with you who just mentioned that I, I had shared this video, uh, a small clip on YouTube. I won't, I won't, I'll, I won't be a spoiler in case anyone didn't see it. Someone wants to see it. It was thought provoking, existentially provoking. We, it was a thought provoking video about the meaning of life any day of the year. And you know, now, currently, um, I think it's even much more thought provoking. I was actually, uh, I think I mentioned, I was interviewed, they, they had this article in the Hamadiyya about um, online uh, Torah and how shoals are adjusting. So they called me and asked they can interview me and I always take an opportunity to share. Uh, and I told them, you know, besides locally in the shoal, what I found to be amazing is I've had um, random individuals uh, contact me, uh, email me, people who usually don't think about more existential things. Um, really some Jews that are quite far away, Gentiles who, are, who, are, who typically wouldn't e email or contact a rabbi. Uh, and it's, I think part of it is that the, the situation makes us question ourselves, and, and part of it uh, is people want chizek. Really, I, I, I honestly believe that everyone, we all, every person today needs chizek, needs to strengthen ourselves. It's, it's really a time where if we're not strengthening ourselves, we're, we're, we're going to be slipping uh, a little. As I mentioned last night, about people who are doing really well currently and some people who are not doing so well. And the, the, the nafkamina, the difference is who is working on themselves in this, this trying times uh, and not. You know, I, I really am not focusing on the tragedy. If I'd be giving a, a shear on Nos of Om Chavero, on feeling the pain of Klal Yisrael, um, it would be a very different shear. And there's a lot to be said about we're, we're largely fortunate in the Jewish community here uh, to be spared, what's going on, on the East Coast and in Israel. Um, but, you know, it's Achenu B'nai Sots, our brothers and sisters, many of them were, you know, endangered or, very, or have relatives who are sick. Um, in New York, in New Jersey, in Israel, Los Angeles. Uh, so it, it, it's a different shear. This shear, uh, I, 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 it's, you know, Yiddish Kai Judaism is, um, we're not one dimensional. You, you, we, there, there are parts of us that should be feeling the pain of our brothers and sisters. And that's a no swell I think for many of us, hopefully that comes more natural. But quite frankly, that's something we have to be cognizant of as well. My, my wife, uh, Hatzadekis, doesn't want me talking about anything bad about dinner because she said, how can you eat dinner and like talk about what this person, or, and she's right. Like you, you can't eat dinner normally when you think about something like this. Um, but we're focusing on Batachan. So it happens to be, I think everyone today needs Batachan. So I, I, I sent this email just to get back what I was talking about, uh, out. And it was, you know, largely to a, a mixed crowd, mostly uh, Jews who probably wouldn't, you know, uh, go on a Torah site, to say the least. So one of them is actually an interesting person, somebody I've got to know over the past year. He's a very high level, um, I'd say he's a consultant. I mean, I, I met him through acquaintances and uh, just, you know, he, he advises Lakewood on how to fundraise and other major organizations. He was a very big person in the YMCA, a very fine person. So I sent him this email. He, he got this YouTube video as well. And he sent me a very nice email back. Uh, and then he said to me, you know, I hope that, you know, you know I'm sure it's very challenging. I, you know, I hope you, you he had this like me for a reason. No, you're using leadership and wisdom, et cetera, et cetera. So I said to him, I quoted Napoleon Bonaparte. I said, the, the, what I view today uh, as one of the main, if not the main role of a rabbi is to be a dealer in hope. Like Napoleon once says that a true leader is a, uh, is a leader of hope, a person who spreads hope. Uh, because if you don't have hope, if, then forgetting, if forgetting anyone else, uh, forgetting you can't grow, you can't win. If there's no hope, you give up, you throw in the towel. Um, so he, let me, he, he, you know, I'll just, I'm gonna jump into what the point he, he me back. So Rabbi, thank you. I love the quote from Napoleon. 
You might enjoy a new book about Winston Churchill. He doesn't know, like it, but I like Churchill, but I haven't read Churchill. Uh, and his first year as Britain, and his first year, the first year, as Britain entered the war. Now, for those who don't know, uh, year one, the su first summer as Napoleon, uh, as Churchill becomes, uh, if you were a betting man, uh, England is going to be annihilated by Nazi Germany. Uh, they had already got completely destroyed on the beaches of France. They had, they had surrendered. The Germans actually had plans to first blitzkrieg London and then have an amphibious attack onto England. Uh, it's one of the great historical questions uh, why they didn't. One of the reasons which is factual is that Churchill took over and they actually at some level, England started to fight back and they were concerned because of that. Uh, but that summer, the summer of 1940, it was a very dark <laughs> summer in England. So he says, you would, you would enjoy a book about Winston Churchill in his first year as Britain entered the war. It's called The Splendid and Vile by Eric Larson. Gives quite an insight how strong he was during the crisis and his ability to give the English strength. Um, and you know, as I said, I really believe that uh, what we need to be doing is to be masters of Bitoka now. Um, because you know, panic, uh, fear is contagious, negativity in general is contagious. And it's not helpful, and it's not Yiddish. It's really not a Jewish thing. Uh, you know, it's an actually an amazing thing. Uh, this Shabbos, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm, I, I'm not a, I'd love to be giving a Shabbos couple of trash on. And, uh, but it's Yud Nisan. That's the year of, uh, during, when we left Egypt, it was Yud Nisan. So I, I, I hope we'll have a Yeshua this, 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 this coming week. And the Shabbos, just like a Shabbos Hagadol, and your Nisan. Uh, but it's an interesting, interesting thing that if you're the Jewish people, uh, it, it was Shabbos Hagadol because it was that Shabbos the Jewish people took what, what would be the Paschal sacrifice, would be the Korban Pesach. They tied it to their beds. And when the Egyptians asked them, what are you planning to do with this? They said, we're planning to shecht it, to slaughter it. Uh, as you know, the ram uh, it was the god of Egypt. The mazel of Nisan is the ram. It was the month of this. So it was their god in their month. And of course, Jewish people did that. When you think about this, beyond everything else, you have to have no fear. Um, and, and, and as I mentioned, the people who left Egypt were people who really had no fear. People who had true ability to, to focus on God with no fear, and whether it's the people you're talking to, or yourself, or anyone else, I think the, really what we need to be doing right now is being hopeful. And I, and I spoke about the Ramchal, the power of hope, power of tikva. Um, but I believe really this is the time of year where, 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 where that, that is our, our general avoda in general this time of year, uh, and certainly now. So I want to get into the to the. What we're supposed to be doing, and I'll be giving these long introductions, but I think the introductions themselves are worthwhile um, because talking about the time period uh, as you come into Pesach is nothing for no reason. And I, you know, I honestly, I'm gonna, one more thing, you know, I, I didn't mention this, uh, but you know, my some a couple of people, not from San Jose, did did tell me that uh, they were strengthened. Uh, it's been going around. That, um, that the Labavitcher Rebbe, my grandmother's, my wife's grandmother's third cousin, and is married to his third cousin, who's my other grandmother's other third cousin. Um, when, when she, when, um, when, when, when his wife passed away, the Rebbe had every year, he had every single year, he had a Seder, it's an it's amazing thing. He, you know, he was a Rebbe of tens of thousands, uh, and he had a Seder, just him and his wife, nobody else. Labavitcher Rebbe, uh, and his wife, nobody else, nobody else. And the year she passed away, I mean, he could have had, if he wanted to have a tish for Bregan in, in, in Chabad terms, he easily could have had 10,000 people with him. I mean, would, if we wouldn't know what, which Lubavitch or Chassid wouldn't want to be with the Rebbe and the Seder. They would all go if, if that's what we would have. But he didn't do that. He'd have 10 people, he'd have 100 people. It was just the Rebbe and his wife. His wife passed away in, in 1988. It was known that it was very close to his wife. Uh, was super close. His wife's father was a previous rebbe, and everyone wanted to know, like, 
uh, what he would do that year. Uh, so I, I'm going to quote, this is, this is Rabbi Penny Dunner, wrote this story up, um, but he wrote it from Rabbi Y.Y. Jacobson, who saw the, the whole Maisa, uh, who saw the, the whole ha story happening. He said the following thing. Said, I recall a young boy, Ari Halberstam, who was later tragically gunned down on the Brooklyn Bridge in 1994, approached the Rebbe after Mariv on the first night of Pesach, and on behalf of his mother, invited the Rebbe to his home. Ari's family lived at 706 Eastern Parkway, just one block away from 770. The Rebbe smiled at Ari and shook his head. He thanked him profusely but told Ari that he would be having his Seder in his private office in 770. I was a yeshiva student at the time, continued Rabbi Jacobson, so I'm a first-hand witness to this story. In fact, the Rebbe's long-standing assistant, Rabbi Label Groninger, offered to stay with the Rebbe, but the Rebbe sent him home to have Seder with his wife and children. And so the great Lubavitcher Rebbe, the man who inspired countless people around the world for their Seders, who personally undertook to provide meaningful Pesach seders for the Israeli army personnel who are on duty on the first night of Pesach via Shluchim in Eretz Yisrael, had the seder on his own. Not one person was present. As the Talmud says, if you were on your own, you ask yourself the Manashtana questions, and then, you and then you answer them to yourself. A few of us yeshiva boys did not go home that night. We waited outside in the streets, and after a couple of hours, the Rebbe opened the door to welcome Eliyahu and Navi, and we, two hours, to say, Shvaych He walked outside holding a candle, it was Yom Tov and not Shabbos, and a Haggadah said the prayer and gave us a wave, and then went back inside to finish the Seder by himself. He could have had a Seder with 100 people, 1,000 people, or 10,000 people. He personally arranged for all the army seders in Israel to be sponsored. He was responsible for hundreds of thousands of people celebrating Pesach on Seder night. Of course, Chabad, one of their big things is the Seder night. From Kathmandu to Alaska, from San Francisco to New Zealand. But at the end of the day, he went and did a Seder on his own. He didn't need anyone to be close to God. He didn't need adulation. He didn't need validation. He sat alone and we lived the exodus from Egypt. And he talks about how he believes that one of the reasons the Rebbe did this is that for anyone who would ever have a Seder by themselves, the Rebbe had himself had a Seder. But I, 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 I believe, um, and I don't think it's a, it's a contradiction for his uh, idea, is that the, the Seder, it's really, if you're, if you're around people, that's great. And, and, that's, and there's a lot to be said about that. There's something that you could lose. It, it, there's an ability to connect to Hashem on your own. You know, when I was when I was in yeshiva, one of the people I went to when I was in the main yeshiva was Revolba, who I give shir with on Monday nights typically now, and Ali Shore. He writes an astounding thing. He says, when you learn Musr, when you learn books of ethics, the best way to learn Musr is not with the Chavrusa not with a study partner. Because if you learn it with somebody else, if you study it with somebody else, you could say, let's say you're studying arrogance, gaiva, uh, anava, humility, caste, anger. So you talk in third person. You know, if you're angry, if you're this. So he said, you know what the best way to learn muster is? Learn to yourself. I have to work on this. And there is a my law, a plus, about being able to connect to God on your own, being able to feel Hashem on your own. And really the Seder and the situation that we're all in, I, I mean, honestly, I mentioned last night, I'm not hearing the news for three days that the lady mentioned to me. For me, I don't want to hear the news for three, three days because I, I, you know, I'm, I'm listening to news, I'm not listening, I'm seeing the news, uh, whatever, on the internet, you know, more than once a day now. I think it's important to know. But on Pesach, I just want to be with Hashem. 
because I don't want to know what any pundit, what's, I, I just, to the extent that I can, and I think for all of us, it's just to have that kirva Hashem. I think this situation that we're in uh, is breeding grounds for that. For that. So the Nesiv Hashem says, we're talking about, again, the Mitzvah Sipur Mitzvah of talking over the, 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 for the Pesach Seder, which is all about Imuna, all about faith, all about closest to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, to Hashem. Ve'afilu maharizah. He's going to say a very tifazach, very deep thing. Ve'afilu maharizah HaKadosh, the Arizal says, Shigalas Mitzrayim. Now, I, mean, I said a, a few nights ago, from darkness comes light. Fa'yerev ha'yivokir. It's the, the same, it's one day. After night comes day. So with HaKadosh Baruch Hu, even the challenges, even the difficulties, there's always, always, always a reason uh, for that. There's always a purpose for that. Uh, and the Galas Mitzrayim, the Rizal HaKadosh, the famous Shabbat Isaac Lord, the, the founder, of, the spreader of, the biggest spreader of Kabbalah, and, 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 you know, since Shimon Bar Yochai, most likely, you know, the Rizal said, Shigalas Mitzrayim, Haisa Tikkun Al Pegam Dor HaMabal, Dor HaFlaga, Vador Enish. Whoa, three things. That the exile of Mitzrayim was a specific rectification for the generation of the uh, flood, the deluge, the generation of Migdal Bavol, the, the dispersion of, of Babylon when they tried to build a tower, the languages were changed, and the stability of Enish, who started idolatry uh, in this world. Then you know, when Enish started idolatry of Azar, so the Gemara says, the Rambam brings it down, originally they didn't pray to God, they didn't pray to idolatry, they prayed to the powers in the constellations, thinking that praying to God is not always necessary. We'll pray to the subordinates. We know God's in charge. We won't bother God so much. And then eventually, you know, you prayed uh, to, they forgot about God and only focused on the subordinates. For these three things, the exile of had to happen. Have Tikkun, the door of Hamabel, what was the thing with our model? That every Jewish child was thrown into the water uh, for a while. For Haflaga, that Vyavdu, Oisan, that they tried to build bricks, that they had, they had to build the bricks. They were building a tower to of Babylonia to reach up to the heavens, so that they had to build the, 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 the bricks in Pitum and Ramses. Uh, the, but the, the main thing was of the Zara idolatry of, of the Dor Anish. Like an Amar Akalish Baruchu, Mashhu Ukhulachem, right? He had to say, Mashhu, take, uh, take uh, uh, these, uh, uh, you know, the uh, pull, pull yourself to Mashhu, Yedechem, Ma'avar Azara Shazet, is a Tikon to Dor Anish. Vapi, Diva Yesh, Od, Kar Marvelous Saper, Yetzis Betrayim. Is also for taking. So I just want to say one thing. It's an interesting thing. You would think that Enish idolatry, they weren't necessarily Jews. The Mabel, we're talking about the generation before Noah. I mean, that's, we, we come from the Sa- we're Semites. We're from Shem, right? We were, we were saved. Uh, the Haflaga, we're from Avram. But this is important for all of us, and this is always important. We, are always affected by the world around us. If the world around us is consumerist, unfortunately, the Jewish people will become more into the material world because we're affected by the world around us. We live in a world. Um, you know, someone once asked me, why do I care? It's in the Gentile world. You should care a lot. For, for, so we're responsible for the, for the Gentiles as well. We, 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 we don't, and even if you're not that thinking that highly, even being altruistic for yourself, if the world is on a very low level, we'll be on a lower level. We, they'll rub off on us. That's just, we live in a world that we're affected in. We live in a world of heresy, of, of idolatry. It, even if a Jew is religious, it affects how we think. And I know this around, like in my own, the, you know, I, I see by us, I see by the, the, the best Jews. And I see myself, we're affected by our saviva around us. And so therefore, the Jewish people who had to be ready to accept the Torah, Golas was actually considered a crucible to purify us, to be at the level to take it.
it wasn't just Mashri Adekam taking Egyptian gods, and like we did a, 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 a Java Sagago. It's also, says in Asiva Shalom, telling over the story of Egypt. That is a tikkun. We want to know the tikkun for Avodah Zarah. If you want to know for an hour, day, an hour time, and by the way, as even today, as we, we, we sit in the, the biggest uh, cataclysmic event, most, but we are living today in the greatest cataclysmic event since the World Second War. And unequivocally, since the Second War. Um, but we're surrounded with kfira, with heresy. It's, we, and, and, you know, it's all about China or politicians or cures. There's no word Hashem is not mentioned. There's no Hashem. It's not, it's not there. You know, in the Haggadah, we don't say the name Moshe Rabbeinu once. Now, there's multiple reasons why Moshe is not mentioned once in the Haggadah. But one reason, is, 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 uh, which is integral for right now, is because Moshe was the messenger. Everything came from God. And if Moshe, who was a human messenger who we were able to see, was just the messenger from God, the greatest person to ever live, certainly what we're seeing now, we, should be, we need to be machazic ourselves. We need to know. Yeah, everything comes from Hashem. Therefore, tomorrow, things could, could, be, could, could be fixed. Really, it could be fixed. I, 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 you know, if I had the time, I could tell you the stories of Tanakh, which, which are very similar, which I, I don't have the story of Elisha, in the city, you know, when they're doing the plague of um, by, by Horam and Achav, there's many things, but tomorrow can be fixed. So we, we live in a world today, you know, even in this thing. So don't think it affects us. When we read the news, when we, when we, when we see the reports, of course it affects us. Of course it affects us. Of course it makes us feel, you know, like this is just, you know, what's going to be, will it be three months when they canceled school today? No. <laughs> That really affects me, right? You know, whatever it's going to be, you know. Uh, but it's we forget about Hashem and telling over Sipur Yitzias Mitzrayim, talking about Hashem even by yourself. <laughs> and I will say, and you know, because you know, the Rabbi Jacobs with a lot of Shabbat his own seder, he didn't need a he didn't need a, val- a validation. He needed he sat alone and relived the Exodus to Egypt, which is in our own day and time, and. Sipri Yitzitz Mitzrayim is a tikkun of the Pagam of Arzara. Moshe Kosev, like the Maharal, says in Chag HaPesach, is Chag Hizchaskus Be'emuna. Pesach is the Yom Tif of strengthening the Emuna of Arkane. Sidur Elanu Chachamim Balayla Hazeh, es kol seder ha'avay da hazais. Our sages um, on, on, um, uh, on this night, uh, Told us all of the avodah. Shinyanei runs in elamuna. Everything is connected to, to belief. Everything is connected to faith. The whole seder is an at, an affirmation of what happened, and our, our faith in Hashem's constant divine providence. Kim yesh Every yom tif, every holiday has its own focus. Its own not just a focus has its own spiritual res- reservoir, which is relived in that year, which is in the world itself. In the, in, in, in this, in this time, and Pesach is all about Amuna. It's a night where an individual can work on Amuna. That's what we say. It's a mitzvah to do it, even though we don't. As I mentioned last night, you don't need to. It's not the knowledge; it's the Amuna that we need. Now I'm going to go. I'm probably going to finish like 9:15. If you have to go, you have to go. Uh, but I do want to finish. I, I will ask. Uh, I, I'm considering if people are interested. To still go Sunday night and Monday nights, um, and that, that's one of the reasons I want to go further. If you can email me, if you're planning to, uh, you know, I can still give it me and Hashem. Maybe I'll give it on Zoom by myself. But if you're planning to tune in, let me know. Okay. So, Balpiyam Avuar Shikom Inyan Sipur Yitzis Mitzrayim, and as we explain, everything about the, the night of leaving Mitzrayim is Nucho Lahaven Es Mashmo. It says Gaval de Gazak. It's an amazing thing. He says, that's pshat. That's the explanation of why we start the Seder with what seems to be the Sipur, the mitzvah in the Torah, the biblical mitzvah. The, 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 you know, we, cl- we make the house clean for Pesach, you know, to have no chametz, that we should be at a Seder and have Sipur, with only matzah and no chametz to get this idea of Amunah. How do we start the grand old Seder? You would think, you know, something of Amunah, 
something about the story of Mitzrayim, what do we say? We say, Halach Ma'anya. Hakoilo, now I'm showing him this Aramaic Tfilo, which is like a mix of ideals. What in the world are we talking about over here? And why, and why start the whole Seder of Yitzipur Yitzis Mitzrayim with Halach Ma'anya? Gama Hikshu Mafarshim, he says also, the commentaries ask, Al Omru, Di Achlu Avasanu B'Mitzrayim. We start with a, ma- with a matzah that our ancestors ate in Egypt. Halal ha-matzah, yizeich l'gula. We have matzah to say there. We're not talking the matzah of subjugation. The matzah at the Seder is supposed to be the matzah of, the matzah of gula, of redemption, of salvation. Like we know that they, they had to leave so quickly that the matzah presents leaving quickly. Can Tamua also a pella, is why in the world are we are inviting guests at our house? If you want to invite guests, you invite people at Shoal. Anyone who's poor, who needs a place, come in at my table. The Yoyser Matim, you ready? You invite people at Shul. Do advance invitations. That's the best, right? Who, who, the night of the Seder, now you're asking. You ask the person a day before, two days before, three days before, or at least at Shul. Like you open your door. You open your door. You're like, do you expect anyone to come? You don't expect anyone to come. You know, actually, I, I said this once on my page, actually, and when I was in Miami Beach 20 plus years ago, like we opened the door and somebody actually came in. <laughs> like some guy walked in off the street. You know, we were living in Miami Beach. He was like, guys, oh, sure, I'll come in. The guy came in, stayed there, stayed there for like 20 minutes. I have no idea who it was. It's not Elio Hanabi. It was some random guy off the street. He sang with us. He joined with us and then left. It was like, you know, so it does happen, I guess, in Miami Beach. But, um, uh, you know, it's not, it's not serious. He himself didn't stay for the meal, right? What, what's shot with this? And why do we say, Amir, and I don't know, I don't last thing. why say, you're just starting the Seder, you're at the end of the, end of the Seder, uh, you know, I, I, numerous people on this call have been at my Seder, and, you know, we sing it at the Seder, and then at the end of the Seder, we sing Lashon HaBab Yushalayim, and then we do a little dance. Um, so, why start the Seder, Lashon HaBab, the Ar of Yisrael, and then the next year we'll be in the land of Israel. Why now do you say that? Like what? We're about to start the separation of Israel. Why these three things? Says the Nesiv of Shalom, and it gives a beautiful shot, a beautiful explanation. Can I appeal Omar the separation of Israel? Says you should know that separation of Israel, with your faith, um, and, and I think it's touched what I said the other night. You know, experiential faith, we talk on, is the greatest we talk on. It's much more than any book faith. Uh, you know, Amuna, you know. We're not giving a class on, uh, on proofs of God. It happens to be, you know, one of the things I, I, I tend to end up in certain circles is discussing the idea of of, Baruch Hu, of God, that it's an obvious reality. And of course, in the world we live in today, for many people, um, either because of their education or because they don't want to hear it, uh, so they, they do a good job of not listening to it. They don't want to hear it, but you could prove God. You definitely could prove God. But you know what? Way higher than proof of God. There, are, you know, you don't have to be a rocket scientist. You don't have to be Aristotle. There's a, a level of amuna that comes from certainly from knowledge, because amuna comes from knowledge. It comes, but, but it's so much deeper and richer than that. It's 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 an amuna. It's pshuta. It's just push it when you understand. It's like I'd have to prove to you you're a father and a mother, so I can give you a philosophical argument. You have a father. You have a mother philosophical argument that you're alive, like, like one of these ridiculous, you know, you know, 10th century philosophical argument. Am I alive? You can, you can, you can you don't need to do that. Bang your head in the wall, you're alive, you know? You, you see it a father and mother, you know, it, it's pshuta, which means it's that there's a, there's a certain level of faith that comes from understanding, which is not a question of philosophy or books. It's a question of just understanding the, the reality of the situation. And the night of Pesach, it's not about a seeper is not trying to, oh, was it a wave? Was it nature? Was it this? Uh, was it, no, it, it's, of course it's Hashem. And, and once you have that understanding, so let's understand what that means and, and, and inter, in, inculcate that and integrate that in our lives and think about that and ponder about that and focus on that. 
Um, and therefore, we don't say the night of Pesach, oh, God, is this? And that? And I have the ultimate proof you know, through history, through science, through cosmology. Uh, you know, I can go through proofs of what the measure says. That this proof, not doing, that's not what we do the night of Seder. You know, it's like there biblical, you know, I can show in the Bible, I can show the Bible prophecies, the Bible codes, none of, that, none of this stuff. That's like, I look at it as like the baseline, like the first base. Like, for, you know, we all look at it as first base, you know. Anyone, it could be a bar mitzvah kid, can understand as a creator of the world. It's not, it's to, it's not this, it's, it's this. Imuna Pshuta means to get it to the gut, to the heart. You know, I've seen simple Jews, uh, we've all seen, especially in Israel, especially in Israel. They go to the Kaisal, the religious Jews, they're simple Jews. The Imuna that, 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 that comes, the love of Hashem, um, it, the depth of it, uh, it it's, it's breathtaking. And it's, it, and it's, and there is, of course, an intellectual basis, but it's, it's not saying they're proving God to yourself. It's understanding that it's God and making it real. And the other thing is not just making it real objectively, it's subjectively. It's in my life, in my situation, who I am, where I am. And feeling that and thinking about it and, and connecting how everything in Egypt was midah connecting midah. So he says that the Mitzvah Shalom. That's halak mani's moves. Almuna pshito is lechem oni, poor man's bread. Just Plain faith. The Achul of a son of Mitzrayim, Pirish Vikoy Hamuna Pshuta Hazos, it was that Amuna that we're going to get out. Like, you know, I, I, I need to know how Hashem will redeem us. I know, I know Hashem is going to redeem us. I need to know how Hashem is going to, you know, put me where I'm supposed to be. Yeah, let me just tell you an amazing story. Actually, I just, my wife reminded me about this the other day. It's such an amazing story. It's somewhat connected, but it's still an amazing story. She told me that her teacher, his name, her name is Rebetzin Tarshish. Rebetzin Tarshish today has a, one of the best um, girls' seminaries in Israel called Mesoras Rachel. And my wife went to seminary, she went to a seminary called uh, Benos Chava, and she was her teacher in Benos Chava. Uh, so, quite a few years ago. So, she said that Rebetzin Tarshish, her grandfather is Rabbi Saratskin, was Rabbi Baruch Saratskin. It's a big Rosh Hashiva that tells you know, great grandfathers of Zalman Saratskin. And the great Gedalim and Kali, so and Tarshish herself, is a very, very knowledgeable small lady. She said the following thing. When they were running in the Holocaust, they didn't know where they were going to end up. They had no idea where they were going and how they were going. They were traveling, they were going through Lithuania. They would eventually get through Russia to, I think, I think through Japan and out, and out, but they had no idea where they were going to go. And uh, she's not, I think she's not, she's a Baruch Sarsen's brother, and the difference that was almost right, because her grandfather. So, you know, there we go. But she said her grandfather, Rabbi Sarotskin, wherever they went, wherever they went, he would unpack and start learning. It could, they, sometimes they were there for one night, and sometimes they were for three months. And they, they had no idea. And other people, she said, they would go there. They would never unpack, because who knows how long it'll be here. And, uh, they would, they, sometimes they're not pack for one night. Okay, no big deal. But then sometimes it's three months. They still don't pack. Maybe tomorrow we're going to go. And she said, uh, uh, her grandfather felt that wherever Hashem wants us to go, we'll go. We're, we're, where I am today, where I am right now, that's where I'm supposed to be. And I'm going to make the most of exactly where I'm supposed to be. I, I'm telling you one thing. Him unpacking, I'm, it may have taken a little more time. I'm positive. He... If, when you think about Limit Alternative Learning Alternative, he learned better than anyone else. You know why? Because when you're, you're somewhere, I don't know, I'm going to be here today, I'm going to be here tomorrow. If you're living the moment, if you're saying, right now, here's where I am. This is where I'm supposed to be. I'm going to unpack. Whether I pack, leave tomorrow, I don't know. That's, that's you don't need to be a, 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 a that's a moon out that Hashem puts you where I'm supposed to be. You don't have to sit there and figure this out. But it, but it wasn't here. It was here. It was here, it was in the gut, it was in the heart. He said, this is where Hashem wants me to be, I'm going to pack, I'm going to learn Torah, and, when I, and if I go, I go. That, that's an amun I'll be talking about, it's accomplished by the Seder. That it's called, it, it, it's amun apshuta, that this is where I am, that's where Hashem wants me. We're, we're the place, we're all, each one of us, the Seder we're having, the Seder, what the Seder is supposed to have. That where we are right now in the world is where we're supposed to be. What we'll do with it, it's up to us. 
you know, well, well there was it up to us. And, and again, if you have a talk on you, we, we, we will be mitzlech. If you don't have a talk on today, it's dangerous waters. Even Listen to this. this How were they redeemed? Why were the Jewish people? Because they had this emuna. They got out because of emuna pshuta. I think Edison, I don't remember the exact quote he said. He said, basically, many people never realize how close they're going to be successful. Because he talked about himself. He himself could have given up. He took him a thousand plus times to, 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 to for his, and that's with electricity, right? You can try and try and you just you give up. You know, if they had the cloud you saw given up, if they didn't have a moon in Trump, they would have never got out. It was the Koyach of Amuna that gave them the spiritual sustenance, that gave them the merit to get out. And therefore, we say this. So the Lechem only is the Amun of Shuta. Anyone who's poor, come and eat. What does it mean is anyone who's hungry? And this applies to every year, but so only this year. Like the Navi says, in the future, people won't be hungry for bread. Not for not for not for, not for hungry. Don't come to the seder for the bread. There's no bread. What? There's no, you're getting matzah. You're gonna get matzah in two or three hours from now. You're ready. You know, you know, invite someone to come in, and if you're hungry, the meal's in two hours. The meal's in three hours. Yeah, you're not eating now. Who? What are you inviting somebody for? What are you hungry for? It's call me that you're you're raw. Ladvar Hashem. If you're, if, you're, if you're hungry for the word of God, if you're hungry for Kirvas Alakis, if you're hungry to be close to your creator, if they, call me, call me, my, anyone come. Say there's your chance. Now's your moment. Call Anyone come now. You want to get a Muna? You want faith? You want Kirvas Hashem? You want to be, now is your chance. It's not here in three nights from now. Come tonight. It's now or never. Now is a seder. You ask about lachma anya be amuna pshuta. We're gonna have tonight the lechem of oni. We're dealing with amuna pshuta. Avi she'elam shumar goshes vasagas. Kimi meno totzos chem. Because in that you get life. Av ayada yuchal agiel the kol madrigas al yoynas. And from there you can come to all of the the hechir the, all the higher levels. As it says, right? everything, all of the, the levels of Pesach come, come through Amuna. That's why, we finish, now we're here in Golis. But Amuna, faith is the it's the source of our of our life. We got the Shana Haba. Because in Nehania, Ba'arei, so even we have next year when we're in Israel, Gam ken amunah tiyah mechur chaseno. Nothing's going to change. If we were in Gauls, our success is our amuna, And no one think, even in Israel, even in Israel, meaning we built the temple in Israel, it's amuna. Hash the Avdei. Right? Now we're slaves. It means we're slaves at some level. Spiritual slaves. We're, we're, we're subjugated spiritually in a world without Mashiach, in a world without Mesh Mikdash. But even when it's good, we need to have a Muna. It's always a Muna. It's always the faith. That's the essence of connecting to God. Maimar, the Balshamta, the Balshamta used to say, Achar Kol Madregos, and after all the Madregos, you come back to a Muna Pshuta. Therefore, Halachmania is the Psicha for the Seda. We begin with Halachmania. Know what the Seder is. Know who we're inviting to the Seder. Know what's being the real food of the Seder. What the Seder is all about. The Seder is all about Emuna. If we come into the Seder with that idea, with that knowledge, and this year, Rabbi Sai, we, we are having some 30 days of preparation, some hachana. We, if we take advantage of a Seder, whether we're, we're fortunate enough to have spouses or our immediate children or house are just us. We remember the real, real guest in the theater is it's us and Hashem. And that's the goal this year. It's the goal every year. But certainly this year yes. we have a community like never before. Rabbi Sai, 
Have a good night. I sent the okay. email this morning. Thank you. Thank you, Rabbi. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, if you want a class on Sunday, let, drop me an email, okay? Or Monday. Okay. I plan to give it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Rabbi. Bye. Bye. I will.